Hello and welcome. I will today show you a lot of tips and tricks I have gathered from my work with Trimble and Tecla. So here we have, we have a model topic, I have a drawing topic, reference modeling, and we have some kind of performance. So the first one I want to show you a little bit about today is copy to another object. So the copy to another object is a way to copy parts from one object to another. But one thing you need to be careful is which end you have your handle. Let's have a look. You can see I have two parts here with handle in different ends. Now I would like to copy the two steel parts from the bottom part. So by doing that, I will first select them. Then I will right click here and start the command. So go for the copy to another object. Then click which object I want to copy from and which object I need to copy to. And here we can see that it comes in in different ends because the handle points is different. That is another way I can come around that small problem. So if we look at another tool we have, copy to another plane. With copy to another plane, I go in and set a plane and I go to the other part and set also a plane. And from that plane, it will put in the parts. So let's have a look at that here in the live. So I click my two parts and I want to copy them up here. So I start the command and this time we use the one to another plane. So and I need to define my plane here. So first I find my oigo, then my x direction, and then my y direction. When I have them in place, I can choose exactly the same just on the other part. And now take a nose exactly how to put in these two flanges. So the next thing I want to talk a little bit about is the copy linear. Uh, the copy linear you already know. It's a common tool in Tecla, but you know that you can use calculation for it. I will today show you here a way to use calculation. So here I have two parts and I would like to make nine parts between with the same distance. So I start the tool as the normal way we do with the linear copy. And from here, I pick my two points between the two parts I have already. And now I can go in and put an equal sign in front. That means I can do calculation. So now I divide it with 10 and I do that for my x and also for the set direction because here I have a distance as well I need to divide and then how many pieces I want to have. So I get nine pieces in with the same distance between. That can of course be done in an easier way if I want to use my work plane first. So let's have a look at that. So now I take my work plane I set the work plan here with the two points, and then the work plan will follow the, the edge here. So again, starting the cob linear tool, and now when I pick my two points, I can see I only get an x direction into the tool. Now I only need to divide that one, and it's a more easy way, and only with the nine again. And then we see I get the same result, but just easier and an easier uh, number to work with. So this one also something you already know that you know that you can put parts in by writing x, y and z and, and it comes in. But do you actually know that you also can write an angle and a length? So let's have a look at that. So in this video here you can see I now will put in a beam but not with only a place. Now I actually put in an angle. So I say it should be 1000 long but with an angle of 45 degrees. And now you can see I get 45 degrees around this column. But what if I want to have it in the set direction going up? That's also something we can do. So here is the next example. I put in 1000, then a zero and then 45. Then we will go up instead of around. So that's two good ways to put beams in with an angle. So we can measure here to see it's correct. So here I've measured the one, you can see 45, and the other one also going that way around the, the co column, and you can see that's 25, uh, 45 as well. Then the next one is direct manipulation. A lot of people using direct manipulation to manipulate their parts in the model, but do you actually know that you can actually do more than there are in the normal standard setup? So let's have a look here. So normally when you go to take manipulation, you have one single line here, you can change your part width in the length. The same if you go for plate, you have all the dimensions at the side and you can 
drag them and you can change your your plate size the size but actually there can be more so now we can actually add some extra handle here go to the mini muse bar mini toolbar and if you go down here you can actually put on extra dimensioning x y and z so now when i hit the mouse over the line again you can see i have more lines to deal with so now we have more ways of working with the direct manipulation the same here for a beam i can also go in the same place change it to have more x y and z on now you can see i also can drag it in the x and y direction so that's a pretty cool thing to get more flexibility with working with direct manipulation okay let's continue so the next thing i want to talk a little bit about is uh, when you are doing things in your model you do some cuts you do some bolts wells and sometimes you cannot find the objects so the object will be um, hidden or just place really really long away it's hard to find it so here is a good tip to how to find related object in the model so let me show you here the first thing i do i first turn all things off in the model so i only see parts and then hit the modify for that then all other things are gone then i find the part i want to find the associated part with and actually on that part i say show only selected so now i only see that single part in the whole model now the trick is select that part and delete it when it's been deleted when i now hit the undo all the related part will be visible in the model and if i zoom a little bit out here i can actually see something has hide it a really long away up there there is a cut and now i can delete that cut if that was the cut i need to delete so that's a really really easy way to find parts related to a part if you cannot find them then this trick is helpful so the next topic here is actually about undo so how we can undo in the model there is actually two things i want to highlight for you there's the first one undo history we have in the top and then there is the undo last picket point so here we have the undo last picket point i pick some points now i pick wrong then i can actually with backspace undo my picking and then go forward again and pick some other things so Normally people are starting from scratch again because they doesn't know that there is actually this backspace way of going back when you are picking point. We can actually lock the axis when we are modeling and snapping by using X, Y and Z uh, on the keyboard. It's a really, really old features in Tecla and the red frame here is actually where you can see if they are locked or not. And you can see when I now begin to work, you will see that X and Y will pop up and down in that area. So let's try here. I will make a plate and now I first hit the first uh, corner here and I lock my X direction. So now I can click over there and click up there as well. And now I release my X so now I can choose whatever I want. So now I lock my Y direction. I can only pick in the Y direction. So I pick down here, but it will still be modeled up there. And again, I release it. Then I lock my X direction again. So now I can pick on on the other side over there <laughs> sorry <laughs> and now i have a plate model outside there in the free space but actually with picking points on the two paths i have already modeled so it's a good way to be sure that you are model things in the correct direction this can also be used when you are model in in the levels so if we are model things in the, in the model with the levels then it's possible to lock the, 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 the code you are in, so the level you are in. So let's have a look here. So I would like to model something in the same uh, height as this. And now I have locked my set direction. So if I pick down here, it will still model things on the top. It doesn't matter where I pick, it will still put all things in. If I pick down here, it will still model things on the same level I have locked my x2 so i can continue model something else model a, a foundation over here as well and you can see still it will be in the same level because i have locked my set direction so it's really really powerful way of be sure that you are model things in the same level but you can pick in 
all kind of level. One of the a little bit newer things that I integrate is this search bar. It's really, really good, but you need to know that you can only search for name, profile, material, and position number. That's the things that are working down here. Here I have a model. And now I will do the model so we can see what I'm selecting. So now I will search something here. I will search for a profile. And now I search for the whole model. So it finds all the ones called 100 times 10. I can also do it in selected area. So now I will take the other one over here and it only finds the part that are in the selected area. And now I can actually do some changes to this one directly from the sidebar. So I can now change them to 20 instead of 10. So an easy way to find all the profile with the same size and then change them. This is also a pretty old good tips, but the select report is something I always tell my customers about. I think it's a powerful way of working in Tecla. Um, when you have the selection report, if you don't know what it is, I will show a little tips about it right away. But first I would like to show you that, tell you that we have this combination we can use. So you can use the pick in the list and use the set key on the keyboard that will zoom to a specific part. You can also select something in the list and hold down the F on the keyboard, then it will fit the worker area to that specific part. So let me show you here in the video. So I have a list here with all the parts in the model. And when I click on something here in the, the list, you can see it highlights over in the model. It's small things and it's not easy to see, but when I use the, the set, it zooms directly to the one I click on. I'll do it one more time. I hit the set and I hit something in the list and it zooms directly to that part and show me where it is. That's also possible. We can also use the fit work area. Then it will put the work area around that small part. That will be the next one I'll show you here. So now you can see that the work area, the green uh, work area is set around the part. So it's pretty easy. Now I will go a little bit down here and take some other parts. But you can again see every time I click, it will zoom in. It will find the part, it will set the worker around so we know exactly where we are in the model and what we need to do with that part. The same here again, only showing the part that is almost related to it, otherwise only that part will be highlighted. So pretty, pretty good way of finding things in the model. The next one here is helpful points. We have a lot of point functionality in Tecla and uh, I will not show them all here. Uh, I know you're low a lot of them and you are using a lot of them already. But I'd like to highlight three ones so we are not seeing you are using so often. So target to a circle, intersection of a part and a line, and intersection of two lines. So this one is the intersection. So we have the line here and we have the other line here and it finds the intersection point between these two lines. Now it gives me a point and I can actually zoom to that point or build a part to that point, like I do here. So that's an easy way to find exactly a point where these two parts are connected to each other and then build from that. Mini toolbar, create drawings. That's a new functionality in some of the new version of Tecla. So you can actually create your drawing directly from the mini toolbar. You can also open the drawing directly from the mini toolbar or show the drawing in the drawing list. Let's have a look at how that works. So first I have a part, I need to create a drawing. So I go down here, create single part drawing. And I go down again, and I can see the single part drawing is there. I can also go down here and make a simple drawing. So now I both have a single part and a simple drawing. I can open them like this, directly from the mini toolbar. So you can see down here, I can also find my assembly drawing directly from the mini toolbar and open them and do my modification and do the save and all the things we normally do. I can also find them in my drawing list. So if I need to find them in my drawing list, I can click on this one and it will find my drawing directly in the drawing list. All other drawings will be hidden. So it's pretty easy to work with this way, to find drawing, create drawings and do some changes to your drawing. One of the, not the nearest function, but one of the functions that have come into Tegra in the past uh, couple of years is the rebar set. And the rebar set, they are pretty nice, but they can also do really, really many things. And there are some 
problem sometimes people doesn't know that they can do with rebar set. Let me show you here what it is. It is actually if you want to make rebars going outside the part. So here I will put in some rebars. So I click here my rebar where there's need to go around. And you can see here that's the normal way we do rebars with rebar set. But what if I want this rebar to go maybe up to the to the beam or down to the foundation? Then we need to do something more. So let me try to show you here. So I'll pick again my rebar set and now I will change this. So now I can change the boundary here. So I will set this boundary to go a little bit more down in the foundation. And maybe also I will like it to go a little bit out to the side and maybe also up to the beam. So now I get a new boundary I can use. So this new boundary, I can pick which of these boundary I need to have the reinforcement following like that. So now you can see I have made some reinforcement with rebar set. That's actually going outside the part. It's actually going up to the beam and down to the foundation. So hopefully that is a really good trick uh, to how to also can use your rebar set for others and only rebar single parts, but also have it going outside. This one is a really, really, really good one. It's a functionality that have been there in Tegla for a long time, going back to previous selection. So if you somehow select something in the model and you click wrong or uh, the selection will go away, then you can always use Alt P on the keyboard and it will come back to your previous selection. Let me show you here how that can be done. So I now select some parts. I'll select some of my beams here in my model and I continue to select and somehow I now click wrong. Then I use my Alt P. When using Alt P, I will come back to my previous selection and I continue select what I need to select. So that's a powerful way to come back to what you have previous select. Not that much to talk about here, but that's just a really, really good thing to know. Okay, the next one is select all part in assembly. So sometimes you will just select all the part in assembly. Of course, we have the assembly selection, but that's normally not always what you want. Actually, sometimes you want to select individual parts in the assembly, but them all. There's a good way to do that. If you use Alt plus Shift or just keep Alt down, it will give you all the parts that are inside the assembly you are selecting. And you can do it for more. So if you click more, then just have Shift down as well at the same time, then you can click on more assembly. Let's have a look at how it looks like here. So I have an assembly here in the middle of my silos here. There's one going down there. Now I hit the Alt and click on the part and you can see all the parts that belong to that assembly is selected. So you can see when I hide things, you can see here that all the plates on the side that were welded to it are also selected. The next one here is the batch editor. The batch editor is also a really powerful new functionality in Tecla. Um, it allows you to do some changes to one part. And if you have equal parts in the model, you can actually get that changes you have made to all the other similar part in the model. So let's have a look at that. So here we have three, four beams and I do some changes to one beam. So here I shorter, then I can short all the other ones. I move it up, I can move all the other ones up. I can do some extra parts to it and attach it to the part. Now if I hit the modify or the then you can see from the batch editor, it changes it on all parts, the same with a cut. So here a little bit more tricky ones, but still same tool, batch editor again. Now here I can select some of the part I don't want to change. So it will change all the other ones that is uh, having this uh, check mark on, but the other ones will not. So if I do some changes now to the model, it will react on all the part that is checked off checked on. So like that, I put reinforcement in and the reinforcement comes to all the other parts that is similar. But it will not do for the ones that is checked off. So for, in this case, four beams that will not be changed. 
So that's how we can use the batch eater. It's really powerful and it also helps you not doing by mistake a little bit changes to one of the parts. So if give, Tickler will give it a new number. But in this way here, Tickler will keep the number and you will always have equal number for all these equal parts. Keyboard shortcut. Hide work error from, from the model. So we have this green box here that is the work area. Sometimes if you want to make screenshots or anything from the model, it's irritating to have this green frame around and we can get that away. So if we do a redraw that we normally do, but then hold shift and control down at the same time when we do the redraw, this box will go away. So let's have a look. It's good for making screenshots. So I go down now and take the read wall and have these two keys down. It will go away. And without, it will come back. So that's just an easy way to get it on and off. Then another small keyboard shortcut. If you make a drawing and you actually want to see the drawing at the same time you make it, then you can actually get the drawing being created and in the same time being opened up. So that's with control shift, then you can hit the create drawing and it will come up when you create it. So let's have a look here. So in this case here, I will open the, the new way of doing drawings. And here, if I hit the create and hold control and shift down at the same time, it creates a drawing as normally, but it opens up at the same time. So now I can directly go in and see if the drawing is okay and close it and then I'm finished. Then the next thing here is overlay drawing in the model. So sometimes it can be really nice to see your drawings inside the model to see if it's placed correctly and see if things are uh, to, for do some kind of quality check on your on your on your drawings on also on your model. So let's let's have a look here. It's a pretty old uh, functionality, but it's still really really good to know how to do it. So I go in here on a drawing, and this drawing here we can see. I have some dimension at the top here. I have some dimension over here. I have another drawing here. That's a foundation drawing. I have some, I can put some dimension in here so we can see what changes. Another dimension here at the other way for this foundation. And we can look at the last drawing here. This is the drawing with a detail here in the middle. And that detail actually I can go out here and also do some small changes to that. So let's put in a, a dimension here. It's just to put in some dimension so you can see actually how all these things are put in now will be visible in the model uh, when I go out to the model and overlay the drawings. So three drawings have been changed a little bit. Now I'll go to my model and now the trick is to get the drawing visible in the model. So I go down here to snapshot, then I get the snapshot up of the drawing. And now up here we have the overlay functionality. I will set it to blue colors and overlay. Then if we turn around and look into the model here, we can see that the drawing is visible in the model now. And I can see exactly where the drawings have been taken from. And if I zoom in, I can see all the details that is in the drawing. So here my dimension line I was putting on. And also the other one I was putting into the, the detail, so we can see all the things are here. If I take another drawing, so that was my foundation drawing. Here we can see it's placed on the foundation and it also have the dimension I have added. So all the things coming directly from the drawing to the model view. So it's, it's not something is just more like that we can do some quality control and, and see is it okay, does it look fine, um, yeah. And the same here goes directly to the end here. So yeah, that's the way of doing the overlay of drawing in the model. So this is overlay drawing in drawings instead of overlay drawings in model. So here I would like to do some changes to my model first. So I change these two foundations to be much Bigger. And then I can go to my drawings. So here I have my new drawing. And in my new drawing, I can overlay the old drawing. So I can see the changes from the last drawing to the new drawing. And I can see what had happened. So that's overlaying between an old drawing on a new drawing. 
but I can also take this drawing and overlay it to a, another drawing that is in my list. Like that. So now I open up here another view or another drawing. And here I overlay my foundation. And now I can use that to align my columns. So I'm sure that this view here or this drawing will look will be placed in the same uh, location on both drawings. So place it up there. And now I'm sure that they are placed totally equal on each drawing. Yeah, and then save and then I'm sure that when I print these two drawings out, the column will be exactly on top of each other. Show drawing views in model. So that's again a little bit the same, but again another way, because we have talked about showing drawings in the model, but now we are talking about showing drawing views in the model. And we can actually do some changes to these drawing views. Uh, so when we do changes in the model on these drawing views, it will actually update the drawing. So there's a, a little uh, icon uh, you can see. We have it uh, here. And you can see if we click on that one, we get this menu we have a little bit up there and that menu will be used. So let's see here in action. So here I have a drawing and I click on my tool and here it comes up with all my views. So here, this is a drawing with uh, three, three views or something like that. I can zoom in here and see I have a section view down here and I have a detail view. I can click on one of them and then I can see actually how deep this drawings views are looking in the model. And I can do some changes to this. So now I can cut it so I can see exactly what there are in the drawing. And now I can begin to, to change things here. So if I don't want to have the drawing to or the view to look so deep, I can change the dip. So it only looks with that dip at that set it to 250. And the same here in the other end, I can set it to something smaller. So that's actually a good way. And if I now press OK to this, then it will actually update the drawing as well. So we will go in later on and look at the drawing. It will actually be updated. So you don't look that deep down in the model, in the view. So yeah, let's take the next one. So this one here is also a same functionality, but just one of the other uh, features there are. So let's have a look at that. So here again, I click on one of my views I have got into the model. And here you can see, I can see all my views and I can actually switch between them with this drop down. So I can take whatever I want. Now I take the detail again that we have showed before. So I can go in here and look at this detail. I can actually do things with this detail. I can see also I have a small section here. So that's another view. I can see how it looks like, which plane it is in. And also here I can do some changes to that one if I want. I can get a plane view of that. So if I click here, I look directly into that. So I just need to hide this one here. So it's laying on top of it. But now you can see I get a view looking directly into this cut. So looking at the same way as it does on the drawing. And from here, I can do some changes. I can do some model changes. I can do some changes to the view, whatever I need. Let's take one more look at this one. Again, here we have a view. I zoom directly into that view. And we can actually do some changes to this. We have the rotation as well. So you can actually rotate the view directly from the model. So now you can see I rotate this one. Maybe that's easier if I want to figure out how much of the bracings I want to show. So now it's easier to drag in these lines to show how much I want to show of the bracings on the drawing. So exactly what we see here is what I get on the drawing. If I click OK to this now, I will get exactly that view on the drawing. So the last thing, but not the least thing, because this is one of the good things here. Here we can actually move the view from one place in the model to another. And that's something we have that's a good new feature we need. So let's see here. I have a view 
So that's the section view. Now I can actually drag that view to another place. So now I drag my view to a totally another place. And when we have dragged that view, we can also decide which way the view should look. That's the small arrow we have showing which way we are looking in the drawing. So there's a, uh, here I can change, change it by clicking this button and then we are looking the other way around. So now I click OK and save it. So when I open the drawing again, we will actually see that this uh, section has changed. So now we are looking from the other side directly into the same building. So just by changing things in the model, it will actually update and change things in the drawings. Main view on drawings. Sometimes it's not always easy to decide which side of the main view that will be up and down. But we actually have this one called fixed drawing main view. If we set that on the part, we can decide which one should be the up direction. So we have this top, back, bottom, start and front. If we set that, then we just need to go into the drawing and say that the drawing should be created by looking at this fixed drawing main view. So let's have a look at that. On the drawing, there's something called fixed drawing main view, and we need to use that one. So it's a little bit small here, but you can see I go in here and then I set, set this one to, I think I set it to back, I cannot see it, but I think it was to back. When I click the back, the view will change and I will see this part exactly from the back. So as you see in the small uh, drawings I have made uh, here, with I have the arrows on, there's the back arrow, and that's the one we are looking exactly down on right now. The same thing we can actually do, this was a part, but if we have an assembly, we can do exactly the same for an assembly. It's just using the main part of the assembly and set the same properties and set the same properties on the drawing as well then that will affect the whole assembly, how we will see it from top, back, front, or where we want to see it. So again, put it here on the drawing to fixed, and then it will follow the fixed drawing main view I have set in the model. So in this here, I have set it to bottom. So if I take the, the fixed on the drawing, it will look from the bottom. And here, just show you where it is. So if you are inside your, your drawings, you can find the settings up here. So, and it's just set it to fixed. Drawing dimensioning. So again, I have taken these three with me today. So there's uh, three good ways uh, to tips and tricks to how to do some drawing dimensioning. Especially if you have some uh, bolts or some other things you need to dimension and, and they are not uh, perpendicular to the part you want to dimension, then sometimes it can be hard. But let's, let's uh, have a look here at uh, good ways to do that. And so here, I would like to dimension these two parts, or two bolts. When I try here, it goes pretty okay. I can put it down here, and then I can add some extra dimension. That's one way to do it. A perpendicular dimensioning, so the other way around, if I need to do it on the other side, I just pick the two part here, and you can see now I can pick easily the other way of the dimensioning. Let's have a look at the radio dimensioning. So when you want to do a radio dimensioning, you need to pick exactly correct points. If you not click the same correct points on the line, you will get a wrong dimensioning. So you can choose to decide if you want to select the middle points or end points, but just you need to do the same every time. So let's have a look here how it will go. So first, I try to put in here my dimensioning and I pick my radius, so I pick some different points, put it in, and I can see it's not giving me the correct uh, radius. And if I pick something else, try again, different ways, it gives me too high radius. So the trick here is to pick the same every time. So if I go here for end picking, so I just need to have the mouse to find an end point. There is one. Then I need to find the next end point. Just the same. So end point and then the third end point. So when I find three end points, then I get the correct dimensioning. So just need to pick the correct 
same point, then you get the correct radio star means on. So that's a good tip. Just remember to pick the correct, the same every time, then you will get the correct radios. Drawing symbol in text. So I will not say too much about this, but uh, when you are, need some symbols in your text in, in, in drawing or something like that, there is some good tips and tricks and keyboards shortcut here. So I have written down some of them here. So Alt plus 155 and Alt plus 0216 and so on. That is some way of putting in different uh, symbols or characters. You can also put in symbols directly from Tecla. So if you have some symbols in your simple catalog, you can actually put it in like I have done it here. So you need to put it in with the file name, then the asterisk, and then the, the symbol you need to take in the simple number. So you know that all the symbols have one, two, three, four, five, six different numbers. So you just need to take the number that you want to have in, and then you can get it in. So you can see here, I have one example where I put in a uh, simple uh, plus minus or greater than or equal or lesser than or equal. So it's just really easy way to put it in if you know how to do it. This is also a small tips I like to, to talk a little bit about, not too much, but it's always good when you put your reference files into Tecla, put it in as a relative reference because then you can move your model around and your reference files will still be visible and not hidden. And that's, you do that with, with the simple way of, you can see here, uh, dot dot and then the, the slash and where the reference file is in your model folder. Also, if you send your model to other people or other companies, uh, they can still see your reference files if they are added with, with relative reference. So I will not go too much into this, but just that you know that that's a good tip too, if you, especially if you want to share your model with other people. Then another small thing here is that you can actually put user-defined attributes on your reference model. So if I have a reference model and I would like to find some parts in that reference model that have some specific information on, I can do that. The trick here is to use something we call external. External means that you are looking in objects that is not tickless but is from other software like an IC file or something like that. I have created a small video here, you can see how we do that. So here I have a really big IFC model and I have this fan. And from that one, I will go in and find some information I need to look after. So I go in here and I see here there is a article number and that article number, I would like to find that. So I go here for my selection filter. I add one line. And here I go for my template and name. I change that to external in the front. And then the attribute I want to search for on the part. And then of course, which information this attribute needs to have to be found by this filter. So just need to click in here and say select for model. And then just click on this fan and it will give me the value that is there. So that's the value. Now I have a filter that can find all the parts in the model that have this specific value. So you can see when I select now, it select me all only the part that have this value on. So a really, really powerful way of finding all the parts with exactly this production number on. So the trick was external in front. Then something new from 2022. So we have the short, shortcut keyboard here and that is actually for reference file. They have got their own uh, way of being showing. So instead of being shown together with, with components, now it can be showed itself. So you can use, instead of control one, two, three, four, or shift one, two, three, four, you have control shift one, two, three, four. So that's the new one. So I have put it in here on the slide. You can see it. Also a small video showing when I use them. So I now try to use one, two, three, four, five. So let's see if I zoom a little bit in here. So one, two, three, and four, and five. So that's the new way of looking at reference files. Okay, next thing we will talk about is performance. So a, a right round parts in the model is always good, especially if it's a part that you know that will come in a lot of times in the model. So in this example here, if we 
look at this uh, part down here. Zoom a little bit in. We can see this is made with a pulley beam. And this pulley beam is actually having faces. We have faces around all these area at the pulley beam. So that means that Tegla needs to use uh, memory on calculating all these faces. If we look at a column here, this column only has six faces. So it's much, much faster for Tegla to actually make this big concrete column than this uh, special uh, rebar. It's not a rebar, but it's a pulley beam. What we prefer you to do instead of using a pulley beam here is actually using a rebar because a rebar is much, much lighter for Tegla to use. In my mind, this one is a no-go and this is a yes for rebars. So use rebars instead and special. Now this is a lifter. So if you have thousands of lifters in your model, you can definitely see the difference here in, in, in performance. I just made some small calculation here. So you can see if I made this pulley beam thousand times in the model, it takes one minute to create a GA drawing. But if you made it with a, a rebar instead, it will take three seconds. Now this is a pretty old uh, calculation. So this time has changed now, but still there will still be a lot of performance to get if you use the rebar. The same if you are modeling stus, uh, again, don't use the, the, the beams for that, round beams, but instead using the bolt command or something else uh, that is not required that much uh, faces. So again, not that one, but use the, the, the bolt command or the stus command or rebars or anything if you can do that instead. That would be much better. Just some small calculation for if you have a lot of these in your model, it can take a really, really long time to, to work with the model drawings, section views and stuff like that. And you can see here, if it was Stus we have used instead, we are now on 20 seconds and, and so on instead. It's much, much better and faster. Also avoid when you are doing your own um, embeds. Don't do the embeds too detailed if you don't need it. Normally, an uh, embed is just more like a placeholder for what you want to buy from a fabricator or something like that. So you actually doesn't care how detailed it is. You just know that there should be some kind of uh, insert there and you know the size of it and that's enough for you. The same if you are making hollow core slabs, uh, if you are doing a inner contour like I'm doing here, please keep as few point as possible. So here I actually need to make this round, but instead of making all the points around, I can actually go up here and use a chamfer for doing that profile. And that makes me only have one chamfer at the top instead of many chamfers around. And also here in the corner down here, instead of having two chamfer, I only have one. And then I can change this, uh, this chamfer down here to be 40-40. And then I get it's like I want. So, just some small tips again, keep them as few point as possible when you do inner contour for your, for your profiles and other things. It also reduces the, the, the problem with sometimes if you get solid errors, you will get a lot, uh, many less errors with this. Same goes if you want to do some holes, if you want to do some holes in your parts, Please don't make the holes with a, a cut uh, like this, a polygon cut or part cut, but use the bolt functionality to make your holes instead. That's much, much faster for the program. It's much, much better for your performance. So this is definitely a no-go and this is uh, okay to go with. A little bit the same again. If you need to make a plate, then model all the, the handles with a plate will be better instead of making cuts. Of course, you can also use uh, less point by again using the, the, the points you have and then use a chamfer on them. But avoid definitely to use cuts if you can. No go with the cuts and okay with making the handles. I think that was uh, all that I have uh, for you today. So thank you very much and see you soon again. Mm -hmm.